This week's episode made possible by our friends at Independent Bank. You can learn more about them at i-bankonline.com. Good morning, Memphis. We are here this week with your uh, episode of Meanwhile in Memphis. This is a Tuesday morning uh, look into ways that Memphis is uh, growing, uh, thriving. We're going to talk to leaders who are making Memphis a better place to live and work. And we have the perfect person here to join us today that's doing just that. I'm joined in the studio with my uh, friend and colleague, Anna Thompson. Good morning, Anna. It's a double Anna episode. Yeah, you'd love to see it. Yes. Um, so yeah, as I as I mentioned, we are here to welcome our friend Nick Darmstetter, who is the recently minted uh, summer fellowship director at Contemporary Arts Memphis. All brand new stuff. So Contemporary Arts Memphis, brand new. The summer program, brand new. Uh, I got a, a sneak peek to look at it um, earlier this year when it was sort of being formed, and I got really excited because it's right in the vein of what New Memphis does. Uh, we are interested in uh, developing talent, making sure that Memphis is a warm home for young talent as they're looking to launch their careers. And this program is focused on young artists and young creatives and making sure that they see Memphis as a place where they can grow their careers. So, um, Anna, tell us a little more about Nick before we bring him into the studio. Absolutely. Um, so, like you said, Nick Darmstetter is the Summer Fellowship Director at Contemporary Arts Memphis. And Contemporary Arts Memphis is the region's first organization focused on identifying and nurturing the next generation of contemporary artists. Through a competitive screening process, they aim to identify and develop exceptional creative talent in the visual arts. Founded by a Memphis native and New York-based artist, CAM Summer Fellowship is designed to empower artists early in their developmental early in their development in ways that expand their thinking, inspire ambition, and expose them to experiences that inform better decision-making. So it is a four-week program that allows high school students to kind of really immerse themselves in the creative world. And then one, the last week of that, I believe that they go to New York City, which is really exciting. Well, they, they should pay you good money to be their spokesperson. You, you, oh, you well, thank you. Us, like, I'm, I'm especially intriguing it to me because last week we had the Creative Works conference conference people on and so I'm like seeing it from both sides of like how Memphis can be an like a hub for creative adult yeah, that's talent. A great, that's actually exactly what I had in my mind as I was as we were talking to Nick just the um the the need for support and engagement for creatives not just um as a oh we've got you know the sort of I don't know. I think sometimes we um, think about artists in this very transactional way where it's like, you know, we commodify them very quickly without really understanding what it takes for them to, to grow and thrive. And so I think that uh, Nick and um, the folks over at camp have a really interesting perspective on how to foster young talent um, and while along the way, make sure they see Memphis as a place that has a thriving arts community that can both you know, be a an inspiration for them creatively, but also a place where they can make a living and pay rent and be a part of a thriving community of, of peers. So I'm excited for this conversation. Um, I don't think I'm, it's been a minute since I've been on the podcast. Uh, so I don't think I even introduced myself. <laughs> my name is Anna Ellis. I'm the president and CEO of New Memphis. Um, I am here again with my colleague, Anna Thompson. Um, Welcome back to the studio. I know. I, I, I miss doing the podcast. I, I've been busy this summer. We've had a lot of summer programming with young people. Um, and Just that a has, little bit. I you know. know here we do and a there. lot of work over the summer with college students and young people. So as we are... Thankfully, turning this corner into the fall, God bless. Um, I'm so excited to be back here. So I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. Um, let's get into our conversation with Nick. Absolutely. Here we go. Welcome, Nick. Welcome to our studio with the Annas today. We are so happy to have Thanks you. Thanks for joining us. We've been eager to talk to you all summer. I know. Well, Finally, thank you yes, for the, having me. the stars yeah. aligned here now that the summer is, is over. But <laughs> now that we're at Labor Day, essentially. Like, essentially. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you've had a busy summer. Um, so we want to talk to you about all things Contemporary Arts Memphis. Um, so let's just start at the beginning, and then I want to get into like a broader conversation about your background um, and sort of the arts in Memphis in general. So I have a yeah. lot on, on top for us. So Contemporary Arts Memphis, first summer, first year of this organization's existence. So give us the elevator pitch. What is the project and how did you get involved? Okay, so defining uh, CAM or Contemporary Arts Memphis first. Let's, uh, so it was kind of the, the um, brainchild of our founder, Derek Forger, 
who's a, a Memphis native um, who actually lives in New York City as a successful artist, but he has a strong tie to Memphis. He wants to support the young artists here. Uh, so he came back here and started this program. So lay the, the groundwork there for a moment. Uh, but Contemporary Arts Memphis is it's designed to um, tap into the the talent of Memphis young artists and to support them and enrich their artistic career uh, and you know make sure that they get a good look at what the business side of art is, what the creative side of art is, and you know everything that is in between that. So we have a four-week summer program that, that was kind of our inaugural uh, uh, event or, uh, you know, programming that we had. And they got to spend four weeks uh, doing, you know, college-level instruction, uh, having experiences that they would not otherwise have had, visiting cultural institutions like the Brooks, the Dixon uh, Museum of Art, uh, the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, to be exact, and Metals Museum, a lot of the, the really cool, interesting places that, you know, some people just don't even know are here. Uh, so we got to really embed them in, uh, in the arts, created a, an immersive program for them where, you know, they didn't have any distractions. They lived on site at a place called For the Kingdom for the four weeks, didn't get to go home, didn't get to talk to any friends. We took their cell phones away. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, wow, it was, yeah. was like... immersive. <laughs> How many assaults did you endure when you took teenager self phones away? They were a prime group. They were amazing. I I have a, I'm from, I worked at the Memphis College of Art Mm -hmm. and I worked with college level students and uh, I expected these high school students to be, you know, just a bit rowdier, you know, but they were, they were amazing. Well, that was my, my next question was, so who is the they that we're talking about? So you said high schoolers. So what age, um, how were they selected? Was there an application process? Oh yes. So it was actually a very selective process. We, we picked from rising sophomores, juniors, and seniors in high schools. And we're, we're drawing specifically from Memphis area schools. Uh, and particularly we're trying to put a lot of work into drawing from schools that do not have good arts funding. Okay. Uh, so we can, you know, support them just as much. Uh, so we we put out a call for for um, applications, uh, and we talked to the Shelby County Board. All the art teachers went into some classrooms to talk to them personally to give them an idea of what it is. And once we got the applications, it was all online. Uh, they put in a they submitted a portfolio of work, uh, their transcript or their um, showing their GPA and their grades. And then a, they answered a series of questions that uh, showed their interest, what they you know, want to get out of the program, and uh, just what they might expect, what they would l- want to learn after the, um, after the end of the program. So we, we reviewed all that information, uh, and we had a jury of people look at the portfolios to find the, the best artwork within that, and then did interviews with the students that we selected. So we had 25 students. We actually did interviews of probably about 35 to 40, just to narrow it down that much more. And uh, we picked a a good group of 25, and there we went. So my understanding is the program is free for them to participate? Yes, that is very important. So it is at no cost. It's not free, of course. We have a lot of No such thing as a free lunch. (laughs) Absolutely nothing. We're familiar with the... (laughs) Nothing's free, unfortunately. Uh, But it is at no cost for the participants. In fact, we even give a stipend to them uh, for some of their travel time in New York City. Yeah, that's one thing I forgot to mention. They spend a whole week in New York City... Uh, talking to artists, going to artist studios, going to uh, Chelsea, where they get to see a lot of uh, the Chelsea market, where they see some of the world-class galleries and exhibits. Go to the Met, go to the MoMA, uh, get to see all the really fun stuff. Yeah, I love that part of the program. This, you know, I, I don't, I know you probably don't know a lot about what New Memphis does, but we're so interested mm-hmm. in. Um, creating a community that is really attractive and magnetic for all kinds of talent. And oftentimes creative talent is really overlooked, um, both in terms of its economic impact, um, but also just in the impact that it has on the livability of a a community and how, you know, when we talk about those elements of Memphis that we really celebrate Mm -hmm. and that make our city unique, it is often our creative community that is 
creating that, that is building mm-hmm. that that sort of ecosystem of quirkiness that makes Memphis who we are. Um, so I love that in addition to exploring the Memphis arts community and really understanding this city and what we have to offer, mm-hmm. it also lets them go and sort of import ideas from exactly. a really arts rich city. Um, so I'm curious, you know, I got to chat with Derek, um, I guess earlier this year when this project was kind of first coming into fruition and um, such a beautiful story of this person who has deep connections to Memphis, grew up here, um, that obviously blossomed here as a creative and then had to go elsewhere to really thrive as a professional. So mm-hmm. as you were talking about the curriculum of this four weeks, this focus on not just go make your art, be inspired, but also how do you explore the business side of things and how do you potentially yes. like make a living being an artist? So tell us what those lessons were like for these high school students and how and how you, as a, as a I assume, an artist, um, yes, uh, yeah, who absolutely. is also making a living in the arts in a variety of ways, like tell us just a little bit about how that informed what how you educated them. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, and if I go off track here, just reel me We've in. We've got Absolutely. a whole hour, so. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> just uh, meander. Just meander. <laughs> Take us I, with oh, you on your journey. I do, I do meandering well. Uh, so, the way we structured it, of course, we, we wanted them to, first and foremost, get, uh, have a lot of skill building throughout the program. So, a uh, A majority of the time was spent actually in a classroom learning how to make art. Uh, You know, with college instruction, it was actually at the University of Memphis Mm. with college level, you know, instructors uh, from the University of Memphis. And um, so they they learned how to be an artist first, you know, because that's really important. You can't be successful in the arts. You can't be, yeah. Yeah, you can't be a a creative. A professional artist without first being an artist. (laughs) Yeah, there's some people who are are really good at that, but. yeah, once again, build that, that framework first. and But peppered in there and supporting that, uh, the instructional side were workshops with professional artists who are actually in the field. You know, big name uh, Memphis artists, Tyler French. Uh, we had um, Brittany Bullock from mm-hmm. MMI. Uh, we had Tunky Berry. Yeah. I love Tunky. Um, and Amy Beth, who's actually Amy Beth Rice, who's uh, an instructor at Overton High School. Uh, so we got a good breadth of of knowledge from each one of them and their perspective on the arts and where they came from and how they've become successful in their own way. Uh, and they kind of imparted that knowledge to the students uh, in in different panels throughout the program. We also spoke to just creative individuals. Uh, I, I believe we spoke with Kaylin, mm-hmm. who's in New, Vem- New Memphis, and uh, Jenny Rad. Mm-hmm. Uh, love Jenny. Um, and uh, if I forget anybody, it's not because I dislike them. It's no, just it's because it's been a I, long summer. Yeah. It's been a long summer. Uh, a lot of really wonderful people who can take you know their experience and uh, share it with the students and they can resonate with them. And it was profoundly successful. The, the students got to see a lot of diversity, a lot of um, kind of rags to riches, you know, kind of experiences because many of these students come from means that are not really conducive to being able to be an artist mm-hmm. even. Uh, so being able to see some people like them being successful, going out and doing great things, changing Memphis, uh, we really wanted to also show, like, what, look what you can do in Memphis. Like, see what the see what Memphis is doing, what the people in Memphis are doing. So that was peppered in as afternoon slash evening workshops and and programs. And then uh, we also took them to organizations that support the arts, uh, independent collectors, uh, people who actually we got to visit, uh, people who who actually give grants to creative artists and uh, spoke with them on what they look for, what they want to do, what they're trying to do, their uh, philanthropic, oh, can't say words, <laughs> philanthropic mission, uh, and went to places like Crosstown Arts, Urban Arts, Arts Memphis, uh, a little bit, um, a couple of other places, you know, like that. Uh, so, yeah, it was, that was the the core of the Memphis experience, uh, instruction, workshops, um, seeing the artists in their in their own element, and seeing the uh, organizations that support the arts. So, um, kind of seeing everybody in their own place to and what supports the arts in Memphis. Yeah, I'm sure that just having 
having those role models to sort of understand what a path looks like because it's so rarely a linear path. Oh, um, absolutely. Especially in a creative industry. I, I want to take a small detour because I'm curious, you know, from where I sit, I'm um, I'm both like excited by and concerned for the future of visual arts in Memphis um, when we think about the sort of infrastructure of of the creative community we see, you know, I think some really exciting developments. Um, a, a lot of the organizations that you named uh, that you mm-hmm. were highlighting across um, your summer with these students, some community-based organizations, this idea that we have, you know, Arts Memphis funding, directly funding individual artists as sort of a, a newer innovation. Um, but yet it still seems really challenging to be a working artist here in Memphis. Um, and I, I guess the, the closure of Memphis College of Art felt like a real watershed moment where it's like, okay, like that was kind of our, our central pipeline of, mm-hmm. of um, creative talent and one that really brought talent in from outside of this region um, as, a, as a destination for artists. So as somebody who was uh, uh, at Memphis, did you go to school there before you worked there? Yes, I, okay. I actually did attend Memphis College. Excellent. Art, so yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just curious, and again, I know I didn't prepare you for this question, Very so <laughs> you can take your time to answer. But I want your your perspective on the health of the uh, visual arts community in Memphis, where you see the bright spots, the things that are really exciting you. Obviously, this program to me is like a huge bright spot, um, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, And then where you see us not meeting the mark and really needing to continue investing and focusing. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was actually the director of student life at the Memphis College of Art, and I was like one of the last five people who left the building Oh wow! On the you know <laughs> yeah. after its closure, uh, so it was like a sad slow death too. You know, it was, it was like it was, I, it was the, the right part. way to do it, but gosh, it must that must have been really hard. I I was one of them that had to give the news to the students, and oh. it was yeah, it was really tough. Uh, I was um, a student, and then I was an admissions counselor, and then I was a director of student life for the majority of my time. Wow! Uh, and yeah, uh, that was a it was both. It's probably best for the students, if I have to say this, and sorry, I'm going to harp on MCA for a little bit. Go for it. It was best for the students and the best way to support them by elongating the, um, kind of postponing it, giving them time to graduate, making sure that we have all our ducks in a row to support them. Uh, but as a person working there, it was it was grueling. It was so <laughs> Painful, sad. Yeah. Every day was a little bit hard uh, and less and less reason to come in, but ultimately like I'm incredibly proud of myself and the students for graduating. So so it was in a in a way a relief once it was finally over because it was cathartic in a way. Um just like all right, you know, it's done, let's move on. Rip the but, band-aid yeah, finally. <laughs> rip the band-aid off. Uh but really after that moment it just felt like there was a, a demise and I'm sure I put my own feelings and projecting it out there, but it just felt like there was this a, a really low point for Memphis um, with the arts because I mean it wasn't it wasn't just a Memphis thing it was a regional thing. Uh, we had people coming from East Tennessee, mm-hmm. Arkansas. I'm from Arkansas myself. New Orleans, Chicago. You know the whole region was affected by this. It's the only other than uh, SCAD. It's really the only one in the South. Yeah. Uh, in Ringling, I guess too, but Florida. I don't know if it's South. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so it, it was it's like a little black hole in Memphis. So it was mm. sucking in a lot of things. And, you know, I'm seeing a lot of the artists that I knew leaving Memphis. Um, it was like a mass exodus after MCA closed. A lot of the instructors, a lot of the students, um, you know, it, since it was such a, a hub and they saw no ability to... You know, there is no work for them here. Yeah, so it's like they were an employer. Yeah, there's no employer. Um, a lot of them are working artists, but a lot of them are instructors too. So they have to go to Iowa. They have to go to, you know, New York. They have to go all the way across the country and re- uh, uproot themselves. So from my perspective, it was a very um, harmful moment. Uh, so seeing, but, uh, you know, actually, in a way, MCA was a bubble. You know, I only I didn't see beyond MCA for a long time because I was so you didn't have to. I didn't have to. Yeah. I was so focused on that. Uh, even so much so that, you know, until MCA closed, 
I didn't really, I didn't have a lot of investment in urban arts or Crosstown or uh, Arts Memphis. Like, I didn't have a full understanding of what they did or what they do, even though it was probably my job to know a little bit more. Um, there was a surface <laughs> level understanding that I could impart on to the students, but uh, being a little bit more involved, it's kind of opened my eyes to what is happening in Memphis beyond the confines of Overton Park. Uh, and it's been really nice. It, it It's actually, it's been interesting because I go to places, like I work from home for this job. I, I go and work at Arrive or I go and work at um, city and state or whatever coffee shop I find myself in and I feel like all the people around me are artists uh, I keep hearing all these creative people talking about whether it's you know design work or studio work or whatever it might be so it's maybe my eyes and ears have opened a bit but it feels like it's there's new breath mm. you know uh, uh, there's new things happening and almost as if MCA in itself, it, it opened a lot of doors for people, but it also institutionalized and, and was kind of a, a gatekeeper for some of it. Um, academia is known for that. Academia, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, you know, uh, it, but it, it felt like suddenly I'm seeing all these different arts from different areas and doing different things, and it's not just tied to MCA. It's you know supporting organizations, supporting um, their own individual arts. So. I've seen a lot happening, and I feel like it's it's starting to build. It's starting to grow. There's a little bit of a there's a momentum going on that uh, I was blind to before. So I'm I'm very I have more of a positive outlook now than I think I did two years ago. Uh, much more positive, um, and yeah, it's. Hold it's on. really exciting. Yeah, it's a bittersweet thing. It was for me anyway, yeah. just to know that that was the case and again it did feel a little bit like a death in the family for like the Memphis community at the time and mm -hmm. then I think you have to like readjust recalibrate find that exactly. new that new normal that everybody's been talking about for the last mm -hmm. few years but um, something I'm interested by is that like kind of piggybacking off of that question is we've we've talked to a lot of artists on this show before and one thing that kind of keeps bubbling up similarly to what you just said Anna is that sometimes it doesn't feel like there is that buy-in from an infrastructure level here in the city of Memphis, the way that it is in other cities. So where do you think that balance, do you feel like there is a balance of where you can have the funding and the infrastructure, but not handicap, like institutionalize it either? Like how is that yin and yang? How do you balance that between like letting people be free to do their own thing, but also helping them? <laughs> We're asking you really hard questions. I know. So yeah. Sorry. <laughs> a little too early for that. Sorry. Oh <laughs> Another cup gosh. of coffee. I uh, know, right? Um, you may need to, to say it again at some point just to keep me on track here. But um, so I guess, I don't know. There's a, that is a hard question. Well, it's a hard reality. I don't think there's yeah. one answer. And I don't there's expect really you to have like one neat and tidy tied up in a bow answer. But and let, me, let me reiterate so I know if I'm understanding it correctly. So how do we keep the balance of allowing it to be too free or too rigid of a structure for artists or yes so, yeah, i mean yeah. pretty much like i i want there to be more help and more funding for individual artists yeah. for professional artists for whatever that looks like mm -hmm. I want there to be more funding for Arts Memphis to be able to then fund other people. I want all of that stuff to be true. But how does that happen without somewhere along the way becoming that little bubble, kind of like what we talked about at MCA? It feels like that right. catch-22 answer mm -hmm. of we tried it this way and that didn't quite work right for our community, so now what? And that's, yeah, once again, say it again, that's, that's hard. Uh, I What I think is, what I believe is that allowing just trust it's a lot of trust you know you got to trust the artist you got to trust the creative um um process uh i think funding just getting that trust for people to fund those people to and giving them that trust to just do what they can to produce art uh to go into whatever field they want is key to um allowing them to be successful 
I feel like that's the answer. I mean, yeah. Well, it, I, you know, truly the work that y'all are doing to engage the next generation of artists, I right. think, exactly. is, is sort of intrinsic to opening, keeping that door open, yes. um, mm-hmm. and making, making sure, sure that we're welcoming in sort of the next. Tr- truly, uh, what? Uh, and I apologize. Oh, I, please. I, um, truly, you know, yeah. Going back to our core mission is to get the the young artists excited about art early on. And then giving them a platform to stand on, to, to go forward, feel prepared, and make a change uh, from the outset, rather than 20 years on, they're, you know, suddenly they're, they're having to shift their career for whatever reason back into the arts because uh, whatever might happen, you know, we want them to feel empowered to pursue the arts and not just take a minor in it. Mm. Uh, mm. And then they can, they can take that. And, for instance, I saw something on Facebook, uh, an old student of mine who was posting about how design work in Memphis is bad, you know? (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, there's obvious exceptions to that. There's a lot of good design. They're not wrong. But there's, like, a lot of these local um, organizations, local stores, local restaurants, they may be an amazing restaurant, but branding has a actual deep, deep impact on success. Uh, and if, you know, we, there's a local artist who can support those local um, stores and make good design for them, then they, that has a direct impo- impact on their success. So, it's like, I think I know who you're talking about because yeah. they, they used to work here. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to ask you a more concrete question um, instead of a, a big, yeah. like, systemic philosophy <laughs> question about uh, the yeah. nature sure. of the world. But, Fixing the world this Tuesday um, morning. To that end, this was y'all's first year. You've got 25 students who completed the summer program from an alumni perspective. So they've they've completed that. At some point in the next one to three years, they will graduate from high school. Mm-hmm. What are your hopes for them from a, you know, from an organizational perspective? What does CAM want to be true? Are you guys planning any additional engagements or supports for alumni, knowing, again, that community will grow exponentially as the years continue? Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. And I, I, I mean, in general, Obviously, we're going to talk more about next summer, but what happens between those spaces, the other 11 months of the year, um, when I know you're working hard? So the program was um, fairly, I mean, I wouldn't say even fairly. It was a great success, Uh, much to the surprise of, you know, know, me as I'm building it. Because, you know, when you're in that silo, you go, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a disaster. (laughs) Uh, But it worked out, and, and... you know, obviously there are some things that need to be improved on. There, there's always a new way to, to improve and to grow. Uh, but the students really enjoyed it. You know, they, uh, from all of the post-evaluations that we got, even the day-to-day evaluations, they uh, not only just in, incredibly enjoyed themselves, got a new sense of community for the arts, they, they felt like they were empowered to actually pursue an artistic career. Uh, that was the overwhelming consensus, and it's was, was like this makes wow. my, yeah. this makes me weep. Box <laughs> check. It, it was amazing, uh, an overwhelmingly successful, uh, at least post eval uh, results for that. Uh, and the day to day was always a lot of fun. So we we got a lot of good feedback, some obvious things to to change and work on, but uh, the amount of trust and you know faith that these students had in us was amazing as well. They knew if there was any um, you know fault or anything that we were you know not doing the bet to the best of our ability, they were like, "We got you. We understand. Like this is happening." It's like these are high school students. These are the most mature people I've ever met. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they were amazing, uh, and. We've connected them to organizations and the people, uh, and we actually have a few of those students who have spoken to these working artists and have already gotten this great networking opportunity. But anyway, so uh, jumping off of that and and going to the future, uh, we just had our awards ceremony uh, this past week, uh, and we have been working on a lot of things in the background uh, to support the students, you know, you know, for the foreseeable future, because we don't want to just have the summer fellowship and then drop the students. Like, yeah, we want to continue ignite the spark and then let it and go. And then just let it go. <laughs> we want them to have a continued relationship with us, continued relationship with the next cohort of students. We want them to feel like it's a network op- networking opportunity, uh, and 
you know, we, we want to build a culture. That's the primary mm-hmm. goal. We want to build a culture of support and um, excellence in the arts. So we've been building um, actually a what we're calling a stipend at the moment, but a ongoing stipend for um, a, like building a portfolio of work for college admission and or internships. Oh, cool. Uh, so we were, we're working with the, uh, the mayor at the moment um, to guarantee uh, a certain amount of money that will be paid out to them um, over the course of nine months so they don't have to work, they don't have to uh, do anything that would get in the way of just producing artwork. Uh, and alongside that, there is a structured mentorship, uh, so they will have guidance along that way along their way to create as good a portfolio as they possibly can uh, and giving them information on if they're interested in a specific college or a specific internship or getting a specific scholarship, we can be there to support them and give them information and guide them along in that path. So that's one of the continuing efforts that we're working on and that would be for every year, um, every cohort. Uh, but there's also other touch points that you know we are trying to build into place. We we want to have at least a monthly event, uh, you know, studio visits, uh, workshops at places like Arrow or the Brooks or um, uh, the Metals Museum, anywhere that will have us. You know, where we have good <laughs> partnerships, uh, and hopefully doing that each month, and continuing into about March or April of the following year, uh, where we will start focusing on the next cohort, but then we'll bring those, our previous year's cohort, in to speak with the, the, the uh, next year. So oh, that's a lovely idea. Trying to, to combine them, get them integrated, work with them um, for as long as we can. Well, that's so, um, I don't know, true to the the foundation of the program where Derek as a working artist is like, what, what can I do for my community? And it is, yeah. I mean, obviously, and I'm going to ask you this question in a minute, um, how, how we pay for this, but it's not just about paying for it, for it to be free, but it is truly about like this opportunity to, to, for you to know that there is an ecosystem of artists here because mm-hmm. they are mentoring you and you are seeing them and you are seeing their work and you are understanding where they work and how they make money and how they are able to like live Hopefully, um, a cheaper existence than they would in New York City. Yeah. But oh yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you mentioned um, support from the city, which I think is fantastic as they think about their youth engagement strategies. Um, I assume this is all sort of philanthropically funded. Is the art? Is it mostly the arts community that has rallied around this? Um, how you know? I know it may not be exactly your job to fundraise for it, but how do you pitch it to somebody who says, "Why do you get my dollar?" Well, so one of the best. Um, pitches that we can possibly provide is, you know, since we have actually had the program, we have proof in the pudding, we can Mm -hmm. uh, tell them, you know, specific experiences, talk about specific experiences. Uh, But most of all, you know, we we talk about there being a little bit of a void in in the artist community for specifically high school support uh, for artists, and that they usually talking very specifically about that and showing, you know, how from the ground up we can build something rather than just being a, you know, a community resource or actually a empower, like an um, enrichment program, uh, usually that resonates with a lot of the funders and, and that thankfully they, they had the trust. They had a lot, a lot of that faith in us and provided a lot of money. And that is primarily from the arts organizations in Memphis. Uh, But we thankfully had a lot of private donations as well, which is, you know, not an insignificant amount of the funding. Uh, But the majority of it would most certainly be the arts-focused programs. But the city has been incredibly... That's great. Like, whew. uh, (laughs) Everyone we have spoken to has been really, really amazed by... Derek's vision and what we're doing. Uh, Derek is an incredibly um, humble person. Uh, you know, he, he, his success, as far as I can tell, has not gotten to his head in any kind of way. <laughs> he's, he's just an incredible person to talk to. Uh, but he really instills this sense of wonder and this sense of something is possible mm-hmm. in almost everybody that we've ever spoken to. 
uh, and he's got a lot of, you know, he's all about building relationships. Memphis is a relationship town. You know, you, you know people, you, you do, go, do good by people, uh, people are going to pay back in return and, you know, do what they can to support you. So he is, he's really built that, that foundation to just have trust in the, in, you know, from the city. Uh, so that's been overwhelmingly, you know, why we have been successful in that way. Uh, and I think there's there's a couple of people from New York that have been supportive too, who have roots in Memphis. There you go. Okay. So yeah, that, you know, New York money. Well, we're going to import kind of nice. ideas and money yeah. from New York. That sounds like yeah. the right way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that so many people, speaking to what you're talking about, are are seeing the value in investing in young people and investing in that kind of compounding community that every year you're going to have. 25 more people, more young people that are passionate about creating art, passionate about community with one another, and passionate about hopefully Memphis too as a byproduct of that, which is really exciting. It's hard to not be excited about the potential for what that could mean in the next five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, it is. uh, Yeah, one thing that we really want to focus on is truly like, yes, we go to New York, you know, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it really shows you what is happening in kind of the, the, the center of the artistic world. But really, we're not saying move to New York to make this happen. We're saying the same things that are happening there are happening in Memphis, too. You just don't see it because it's not in the, the spotlight. Um, what you can do as a Memphis native is give Memphis your, your trust, you know, stay here. Put some work into it. It's going to be amazing. It's already amazing. We just need to bring it, you know, build it up and make sure everyone in the city loves it and, and sees it. But, yeah. Yeah, we love that vision. We're, we're mm-hmm. on board. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, you're an artist. What is your, what is your discipline? I originally started out as a metal smither, a metal okay. smithing major, uh, and I've moved a little bit into more woodworking. Uh, metal smithing is a expensive uh, medium. <laughs> yeah, like if you not something you can just like do in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, you can't really do it. You can, but you know, having a torch and a ventilation system <laughs> and a welder in your bedroom, especially <laughs> as a, a, a struggling artist, is not not advised. Easy. <laughs> probably um, for yes, safety it's concerns. Probably not, it's certainly not advised. Uh, I sure tried. Um, but yeah, I, I still love metalworking, but I, I really enjoy working with wood, and uh, I work with Sculpey a lot as well. So you know, it's I have my own studio practice. It certainly isn't something I do every day, but it is. It's a a core part of me as an individual. I have to create. It is a. It, it's how I express myself. It's it's what I do to relax. Working with my hands. Uh, taking something from my mind and putting it out into the 3D world is there's just this intense level of gratification from that and I love being able to see others do the same thing because from my personal uh, perspective on the world is that everybody's an artist they just have to figure I, out exactly what it is I was like yeah, I want you to hang out after this interview and I'll draw something for you and then you can tell me how you feel that, I mean that <laughs> It, it is maybe drawing is not your medium. Yeah, it's not. It may, <laughs> some people are really bad at drawing and very good at sculpting. Um, it's everyone's brain works just a little bit different. Uh, you know, I work very well in 3D. I can do okay work on paper, but uh, it's a lot easier just to make something in the 3D world rather than hmm. on paper for whatever reason for me. But truly, art is just a muscle. You know, making art is just a muscle. You have to flex it. You have to work it. It's like everything else. So everybody I w- can do I would venture work. to say, Anna, that you're a wordsmith. I think that that is That is true. an art. I have an MFA. That is, that, that's an art. Yeah. <laughs> my dad wished it was a minor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So talking about working artists, we've talked a lot about, like, what it is to make a living, quote, unquote. And um, that can mean a lot of different things. So both for the students who are coming through the CAM programs, mm-hmm. um, 
and just your personal story and also the stories that have been shared from the mentors. What does being a working artist mean? Um, what is what is it, what are examples here in Memphis? Because again, you you know mm. you can be an artist and be an educator. You can you yeah. know work within arts infrastructure, as you noted. You can be in the design world. You can be creating um, art uh, and applying your creativity within the confines of sort of traditional business. So I'm just curious as you are teaching young people what it means to to make a living in art. Um, I know that doesn't always mean like you get to close your door and, and make art and sell it and then, no. you know, have dinner to celebrate. So tell us what, what that <laughs> means to you. So to be a working artist, I mean, that is a fairly open-ended question. Like it, you can be a working artist even if you're uh, an accountant. Like you can still be, as long as you are making art, actively making art, putting it down, uh, putting it into the real world. And uh, I mean, that's that's to me what a working artist is. But for the for the purposes of the program, um, someone who is contributing to the culture of Memphis or the mm. culture of the city or, or the nation or whatever it might be, the artistic world. Um, so they're taking their, their art and they're making something that has uh, meaning and express it, it. It's a little bit of their own mind on, in, in physical form. Um, but that really could be whether it's a painting, a mural. It could be they're doing design work for a, um, uh, a, a company or themselves doing branding. Uh, it's someone who is using their creative self to um, to make the area around them more uh, rich. You know, that's not an eloquent way of putting it no, too it much, is. but. Um, they're enriching the area, enriching the culture that they live in, enriching the, the people that are in their, in their lives um, by expressing themselves. Hmm. Uh, and not all artwork is an expression of self. You know, that, that's one of those, what was I watching? I was watching a Netflix show the other day where there's a stereotypical teacher, a stereotypical artist teacher who is you know, all ethereal, you know, was very you know, much had the crystals and all this stuff. I'm like, we're not all like that. Uh, we're not, I mean, sure, we can be that I'm way, like, this but... is an audio form of it. Nick has multiple crystals here. He's oh, not... so many crystals. Uh, <laughs> oof, <laughs> just burdened by my crystals. Um, but anyway, so it, it's, I don't know if I have a very eloquent way, as I said before, of really saying what a working artist is, but I think it, it truly boils down to uh, you're creating something and it is uh, enriching the world that you live in and others around you. Are there specific, um, so in the summer fellowship program, are there specific mediums or disciplines that you focus on more than others? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that may have been what your question was more it about. It wasn't, but, but that, that's, okay, a great, cool. that's a good question. <laughs> I was like, oh, which, how do I want to approach this? Um, so we focused on foundational skills. So at okay. MCA and a, the curriculum for a lot of like freshman and sophomore year art colleges will be foundational work, which is drawing, painting, uh, basic sculpture, uh, some digital work. We didn't have any digital work, um, and uh, art history. I'm probably missing one, but those are the ones. I won't that hold we you had. to it. But I know. Yes. Okay. But, whew, just <laughs> going right over my head here. No, you're fine. So we had uh, painting, drawing, ceramics and printmaking. That's what we focused on. Okay, cool. Uh, those cover a lot of bases, uh, and it, it really, not a lot of high schools, really anywhere. And I've, I, I come from Bentonville, Arkansas, which is ooh, Walmart town, very well funded, uh, Bentonville High School, and it had a very well funded art program, but I didn't touch sculpture not once. Hmm my entire high school career. So it's amazing what you don't get. So these students who may or may not be coming from a well-funded art program have the experience to, or have the opportunity to take a printmaking class, a ceramics class, and painting and drawing, which they may have already had and may have taken before. But it's, a, it's really showing them the many different forms that you could be possibly going into. They are one of the best um, foundational uh, 
classes that you can take. They are some of the best instructional classes you can take that you can then move on into different areas mm-hmm. uh, and explore a little it's bit like more. It's like launch pads into yes. your, there you go. You know, your, <laughs> your welding and your bedroom. Yes. Uh, so what we'd like to explore next here is maybe more digital work. Um, Because that's kind of the trend. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I was curious if that was going to be like you were going to pick and stick like with those or if they were going to evolve every year or if you would just add to. I would like to imagine that there's foundational skills like you have to know how to draw. You have to know how to sculpt something. You have to know uh, those individual processes before you can move into animation or Mm -hmm. graphic design. You have to there. You have to know those things. Um, to be able to do the other things. So we may not change those too much, but we have to adjust with the times. Um, I mean, even 15 years ago, when I, whenever I was in school, the digital side of everything was only just becoming part of the curriculum rather than just a, an elective. Yeah. Uh, so even now, we have to you know, actually do digital work. We have to touch on cinematography. We need to touch on animation. We need to touch on uh, digital illustration. A lot of these students, if they do painting at all, they do it on their iPad. Hmm. Uh, they'll, they'll have an a iPad with a, a pencil and just do painting in there because it's easier. You don't have to buy as many materials. It's more accessible. Uh, and they can just upload it and do whatever they want. They can adjust it as need be. It's weird that paper and pen has become something that is actually not very accessible at all. Yeah. Well, for mm-hmm. one, you know, if, you, if you're drawing on a piece of Stonehenge, that piece of Stonehenge costs $5, you know, and that's just one, you know, one mm-hmm. piece of paper. And the drawing pencils you get, it's, there's a, a heavy cost, cost for all of to that. be able to do all that stuff, which may eventually over come the cost of an iPad. So anyways. Yeah, I, no, I, that makes sense. Yeah. I um, am kind of going into a, 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 a rant there on that, but it is, so we have to change with the times, and we, we hope to do that in the future. Uh, this year was a test to see what was most successful. Uh, they really liked that, but the feedback that we got was uh, they would like to see photo. They would like to see um, illustration, comics even, hmm. you know, a little bit more eye-opening stuffs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as there was kind of a broader age range that was accepted this first year, is there plans to be able to accept people back as like second or third year or not really? One of the... Is that not the ag- intent? <laughs> yeah. We would love to be able to do that because okay. every single one of them was like, can we please come back next year? Uh, and I'm like, I wish you could. But our, our one of the uh, things that we're trying to focus on is... Um, opening it up to as many people as possible. So if we were to invite the same people back next year, that means for every person that we invite back, one, one other less person, person, yeah, yeah, one less person doesn't have the opportunity to um, get this support. So uh, at this point in time, we don't have plans to do that. Okay. Uh, but as we grow and expand and uh, try new things, there may be an additional component that includes them. Yeah, and as you said, I mean, building this ecosystem of of a community of Mm -hmm. those who've come through the program, I think, is really lovely. And I'm really excited to see how the program grows. And I think you did a really excellent job articulating the – I always struggle with that, the trying to tell people why having artists in this community matters beyond the sort of obvious, oh, we sell this many tickets to plays or we have (laughs) – but, you know, which is important, you know, the economic impact, that number. But that sort of – somewhat unseen or unquantifiable impact that is without it you would notice yeah, yeah and it's but, like what, what would go it's, away it's hard to say but I think you, you did a really good job of sort of saying you know what it is that these artists contribute so I think that's really lovely um, well before we let you go I want you to tell me um, what is your favorite I mean this is a, a dumb way to say it. like what's your favorite place to go to consume art in the Memphis region oh. and do you have any favorite maybe not even favorite but because I mean where you can give us favorites but like artists that are working in Memphis that maybe we have uh, we haven't heard of or that the listeners haven't heard of that they should check out. Oh goodness, that's that's put me on the spot. I know. I was like, you've got some precious plugs here. Ooh. You can yeah, you know, so use them wisely. Toss them out like. 
Uh, gold coins. Yes. <laughs> at risk of uh, threatening partnerships and things that we have. <laughs> Uh, my personal, I love every art institution in Memphis. Uh, I'll just done. say that. Nicely done. Because they support the arts and we love of course. that. Uh, uh, the place that holds the nearest and dearest part of my heart is a metal museum. Mm. I love, absolutely love the metal museum. As a metals major in college, I'd spend a lot of time there, repair days, forging on the river, going there as a student to support things. Uh, I'm I'm actually, I was thinking about getting married there and, you know, all these things. So it is the place that I go when I want to show people art in Memphis. Uh, something that is, it's, what I like about it specifically um, is there's beautiful art at the Brooks. There's beautiful art at the Dixon. There's beautiful art in, in David Lust Gallery. You know, all these places that are spectacular spaces. But whenever you think of art, you think of paintings, you think of, you know, a gallery space like that. Uh, that's exciting in its own way, but what's really exciting is showing people artwork that no one would have thought of before. Hmm. And the Mill Museum, it's the only one of its kind in the country. Uh, it gets people from all over the world to come. So when you show that to people, it's astounding. Like, it's something that they haven't experienced. It's in a cool, it's in an interesting part of the city right on the bluff there. So I love the Mill Museum, and I'm very excited for its future especially at MCA. I was going to say, so, yeah. 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 So uh, I love that. Um, other than that, the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, I would say if I was a traditional a traditional gallery space, can't beat that. You know, it is an absolutely stunning area. Uh, for artists, you know, I, I just have to give support to um, Tunky. He's one of my favorite people. Uh, he was like a student of mine at MCA, Nothing and makes you one feel older than being like, oh. I know, it hurts. But um, like, I can't be more excited for him and his yeah, success. So incredible. Uh, but And there's a lot of young artists that also came from that. I have a designer mind. I have a lot of things. So whenever you ask about emerging artists or artists that are doing things in Memphis, I go, oh, there's a lot of these designers who you know are doing things. But they're a part of like Archer Malma or they're a part of, you know, um, uh, what's the other one that's on Cooper? It's Loaded for Bear. Loaded for Bear, you know, things like that. Um, who else? It's I'm terrible on the spot for remembering names no, specifically. Look, Tinky will be a, a extra pleased. I'm like, I gotta there you go, yeah. yeah. Solo <laughs> spotlight. Yeah, I, like I love it. it. Um, Again, before we let you go, I do have a couple more questions. No, sorry, go Anna. for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it was a trick. I'm, like, I'm like, all right, well, we're done. So Thanks, it was Nick. a trick. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, are applications open already for next summer? This is a good question. This is very this is See, this is, why we, this is why Anna does the podcast. <laughs> um, applications are going to start November 1st. Okay. And they'll be open until uh, February 24th. Okay. So they've got, uh, last year, the, the rate at which we were going did not allow for an extended application period. Uh, so we're opening it up for a much longer period of time. Uh, and then we will be doing interviews about a couple of weeks after the closing for applications. Okay. Um, the next year's program starts on June the 4th and ends on June the 30th. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And then one final question we like to ask a lot of people, again, putting you on the spot, so apologies for that, is what does being a Memphian mean to you? Mm. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I think it's really interesting because I, I come from Bentonville, Arkansas, which is a, it's a, it's a devoid, it was, before Crystal Bridges came there, it was about devoid of any culture. It was just a blank slate, nothing's going on. As a country boy, just rode his bike around everywhere. Uh, <laughs> nothing to do. So coming to Memphis, it was just like, it's just this amazing, just concentrated, of, like, culture. I just feel, you just, Living in Memphis, you feel Memphis. Um, you have an intense pride for Memphis. And I, I hate to say it feels like there's a bit of a uh, underdog tale going on all the time. But you just see, you see so many good things happening. And it makes me sad whenever we're passed up, as I mentioned, in, a t in any TV show or any arts culture you know, uh, mention. Whatever it is, like I was watching something. I'm not a huge barbecue person myself, but I was watching a show about barbecue. I'm like, 
why are you just skipping Memphis? <laughs> like, that's a place. Like, it's even, a place. It's, it's a place. place. <laughs> it's a really, it's an important place. Barbecue is not Memphis. It is a part of Memphis. Uh, but it's it's easy to pinpoint that on specific things. But it, it is, so being a Memphi, Memphian is being invested in your city, um, invested in the culture, invested in its growth, uh, wanting to see it succeed, wanting, uh, you know, the individuals to succeed. And even if it isn't this big place on the map in, in the in the city, it's a it's an air, it's a pride. You know, mm-hmm. we've got to have that city pride. Um, we take care of our 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 own, and we take ownership of our faults. You know, we're we're constantly growing. Well, I like yeah. that. I, I think know. He's I do like, like it. We're gonna copy paste that for <laughs> future. I like it. Future use. I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, there, oh, oh, go go ahead. oh no, please. Sorry. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Oh, there's probably important stuff. Is can, there anything for those people pace. listening? I mean, again, Contemporary Arts Memphis, also known as CAM, mm-hmm. um, very new to the city. So I assume a lot of people listening have never heard of this project. Exactly. So for anybody listening who is excited about what they've heard from you, what can they do to support your work? Yeah. So I think you can always follow us on Instagram. That's a cool thing. I mean, you can do that. It's CAM Summer Fellowship. So that's one way to see uh, to get engaged and look at what we did this previous summer. Uh, we think the best way to uh, see what we're doing is to quite literally see what we're doing on, on the Internet. I like uh, that. Love it. So that's one part of it. Uh, but if you really want to support us, uh, I really think one of the, the, the best ways you can do that is talking to your, your sons, your daughters, uh, your, your children, and if they're interested in the arts or have any inkling of interest in the arts, to tell them about this program. Uh, if you know an instructor, if you are an instructor who is a, in high school, telling your students about the arts. Uh, because it's really about the, the fellows, as we like to call them. Mm-hmm. I've called them students. I've called them a lot of things. But we try to focus on calling them fellows instead of uh, students and, and, and the like. Um, or campers or whatever you might call them. <laughs> so we, uh, that, that just it falls into that a lot. Um, but yeah, telling the high school instructors, telling, uh, you know, the arts supporters about us so uh, we can continue to get funding, so we can continue to, to support the, the fellows and do so for many years um, and not just do one one summer mm-hmm. and then get dropped. Uh, that would be a, a really terrible thing. Or building a really wonderful thing. But really talk about us. You know, talk about us to your friends. Uh, expose the arts to them. Uh, it's really exciting. If you're not excited about it, shame on you. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's many things, but really telling the students, or telling the high school students about us and having them apply to the program that will be an amazing thing. Awesome. Yay. Well, Nick, thank you so much for this program that you've built. It's so much more than a camp. Um, it's an incredible experience. And I'm so <laughs> grateful to see where it goes. And I hope we'll have you back on next summer as yeah. we're going, gearing up for year two. I can tell you all about, you know, the experience from the newest cohort. But, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you th- so much so nice for having to meet me. you. Yeah, both of you. Both of the Annas. All the, all the Annas. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Nick. Absolutely. Bye. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us once again at New Memphis. We always have something new going on. Uh, Just last Friday, we wrapped up our Level Up Leadership Summit. Thanks to all that joined us there. And now we are turning our attention to uh, our next big event, TEDx Memphis. It's going to be in uh, February of 2023, which feels like a long way away, but it is not, my friends. Uh, We have recently announced that the applications for our next TED conference is uh, up and running. So if you are interested, the theme this year is Truth or Dare, a big, broad theme. Come to us with your big ideas. A TED Talk is a talk that uh, challenges people's, uh, you know, commonly held beliefs. It can be, um, you know, we want them to be evocative. We want them to be uh, surprising. So if you've got a big idea that you think deserves to be on the TED stage, go to newmemphis.org now. You can also go to tedx-memphis.com. All of those things will take you to the TED application. Applications are due on October 7th, so get them in now. We love to read them. Uh, we're excited to see you at the Crosstown Theater on February 11th, 2023. Anything else, Anna, before we close it out? 
I mean, I think you really hit all the high points. I mean, we have a lot of big events coming, and I believe that Nick also said the dates for when the CAM Summer Fellowship next year will be. November 1. Get, yes. get your kids' applications yes. in, because so those that creatives, too. there's only 25 spots. And we will also have an exciting talk about downtown coming in November, but you'll have to stay tuned to hear more about that. Awesome. All right. Well, y'all have a great week, and we will see you next week on your Meanwhile Memphis episode. Bye. Bye. This week's episode was made possible by our friends at Independent Bank. You can learn more about them at i-bankonline.com.